Hello students, Professor Nugent here. In this video we are going to discuss multiple regression analysis with qualitative information. When we're thinking about qualitative information, we want to look at how groups differ for a dependent variable. When we think about groups, we're thinking about males and females, married, not married, uh, different regions of the country, and the dependent variable might be wage, it might be whether folks are in the labor force, etc. And the way that we bring in qualitative information, like, let's see, married or not married, is going to be using a binary variable. And there are many names for these different kinds of for, for, for this for this variable um, we have binary we have 0 1 you see dummy variables I'll often use this term dummy variable um, you see the term categorical because we're looking at categories dichotomous because it just takes two values, 0 and 1. O-U-S, that's how you spell the goddess. And there are other names amongst these. And what do these variables imply? These variables are equal to 1 if the attribute, the attribute under consideration applies to the observation or if the observation is in the group of interest and equals zero otherwise. An example of this kind of variable might be married. Which is equal to 1 if a given person is married. And 0 otherwise. So let's look at how we might carry this out in a regression. If we want to think about how marital status and the level of education matters for earnings, we might look at a regression that is the following. Wage equal to beta naught plus delta naught times married plus beta 1 times the level of education plus u. So this is the population regression function that we are considering. And delta naught is the coefficient on the dummy variable married. Our delta naught is equal to the expected value of wage given married equal to 1 and the level of education minus the expected value of wage 
given married equal to zero. And the level of education. In this regression, we have married as the included group, and in effect, we're looking at single people as the base group. So if single people include everybody who is not married, um, these might include people who are divorced, uh, thinking about carefully about how you might define this is outside the scope of this example. For our purposes, we're just going to think about married people as equal to one, and if married is equal to zero, then we're looking at single people. And so you might think about another dummy variable, which is we could define as single equals one if single. And equal to zero otherwise. And you might ask, why not include single in the regression too? So that we get the effect of married, we get the effect of single. Well, folks, delta naught is giving us the effect of married relative to single, right? That's what you see here. Because we are subtracting the expected value of wage for married folks minus the expected value of wage for single folks. If we included this dummy variable single, what we would end up with is multicollinearity because you can write single as a function of married. Right? Married is equal to one minus single. So that where married is equal to 1 and single is equal to 0 the equation has 1 equal to 1 and where married is equal to 0 and single is equal to 1 you have 0 is equal to 0 because 1 minus 1 equals 0 so we are not able to include both dummy variables in this equation because we would end up with multicollinearity However, we get the effect of interest just from our delta naught. That gives us the difference in earnings between married and non-married people. We can plot this regression, and what you'll see is that the coefficient on married is in effect the increments to the intercept. So let's plot this. What we're going to plot is wage on the y-axis and on the x-axis we're going to have levels of education. So we might see, let's use a different color, one regression line here and another regression line here. Where this top regression line might be for married folks. Where you have wage equals beta naught plus delta naught, right? That's your whole intercept, plus beta 1 times education. And down here, you may have your single folks
square wage is equal to beta naught plus beta one times education. So you can see that slope for these two lines is the same, right? The slope is beta one for both of the lines. But the intercept is different. The shift in the intercept from the single line to the married line is given by delta naught. So this height and wage is beta naught and this height and wage is beta naught plus delta naught. And so here we have assumed that delta naught is positive so that married folks have higher earnings than single folks. Okay. So this is a regression with dummy variables in a nut shell. If let's sprinkle in a little nuance, a little complexity, we might think about the regression where we have log wage equals oops beta naught plus delta naught. Let's look at a different example, perhaps female. So female is equal to 1 if female and 0 otherwise. Plus beta 1 times the level of education plus some other stuff. So as before, we were looking at wage and delta naught was the difference in earnings between the two groups in terms of dollars per hour. So now we need to think about if our dependent variable is measured in, in, in the log transformation of the series. How do we interpret this coefficient delta naught? Then what we interpret is that the percentage difference between the two groups. So here we're looking at uh, female assigned at birth and male assigned at birth. The difference in earnings for these two groups. The percentage difference is approximately going to be delta naught times 100. Okay, if the percentage, if the coefficient is large, so that we're looking at a large percentage difference between the two groups, then we need to get a more precise estimate. So then we will interpret the coefficient as 100 times e to the power of delta naught minus 1. All right, so this gives us the interpretation of the coefficient relative to the base group. And it's important to keep in mind that this interpretation will be different for different base groups. And it should be that way because the percent of lower wages is going to be higher than the percent of higher wages, right? If you're looking at the same, the same difference then the percent, the percentage difference is going to be different if your base is smaller or your base is larger.